Hello everyone, and welcome to Let's Play Donkey Kong Country, the first Donkey Kong game I'm doing on this channel. If you don't count, um, what was it? If you don't, if you don't count the Donkey Konga showcases, then yeah, this is the first Donkey Kong game I'm doing for this channel. And hey, what a way to start off with! It's not exactly the um, original uh, Donkey Kong game, like it's not the uh, old arcade game or anything like that. But in terms of like a full 2D adventure, this is like the first major, major game in the series, really. And really, the fir the first game that started an actual like what you call it. It kind of it. This is the first one that kind of like had an actual uh, theme going for the Kongs and all that. Like, oh, they love bananas, and um, they have like established characters now. And there's. A lot more going on than it compared to like the old arcade game, which was pretty much just Jumpman or Mario, um, like saving his girlfriend Paul Pauline from Donkey Kong, which isn't even the same Donkey Kong as this. Um, basically, just a little a quick little history lesson, I guess, is that um, Donkey Kong in uh, the original arcade game is Cranky Kong in this game, and. Um, what was it? No, this isn't even Donkey Kong Jr. we're playing as. Like, um, apparently, the Donkey Kong in this game is Donkey Kong Jr.'s um, son or something like that. Um, I mean, I think Cranky might uh, say something like that in, in on one of the visits with him, but I don't know for certain. But um, yeah, this isn't the same Donkey Kong. Um, and I, it kind of has me to believe that the uh, the Mario or the Jumpman in that game in the original Donkey Kong isn't Mario either. Like I, I like to believe that Jumpman is Mario's father because it it would just uh, make sense um, in uh, like in correlation or whatever to the whole the whole fact that this Donkey Kong is a different one and all that. So I don't know that just. Just it, it 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 just makes the most sense to me really, but yeah, I do I do have a lot of uh, history of this game though, like not really um, this version in in particular, but I grew up with the um, Game Boy Color version actually, and um, it's actually it's not too different. Like um, the levels are pretty much the same. It's just like some. Uh, was it so, some environments didn't have as much detail obviously and there weren't so many cool effects like this in the GB GBC version but it was still point for point like a pretty good version of Donkey Kong Country and it was the one I grew up with for the longest time like um, I only have I only had uh, two games on the G Game Boy Color growing up and that was this get well a version of this game as well as Lego Racers which I enjoyed as a kid, but it's not something I really go back to because I'm not a fan of 8-bit racers because of how basic they are, and I just can't really get into them because like you just kind of move forward around along a narrow path and just turn every now and then. It's not really exciting gameplay for me, but um, okay, yeah, I hate those guys, but um. But yeah, like the, those two games were the only uh, games I had on the uh, uh, Game Boy Color, and I just spent so much time going through Donkey Kong Country. Like I 100%ed the game. I had a lot of fun with the bonus content because I'll get into that in a sec. But the Game Boy Color version actually had has quite a decent amount of bonuses you can do outside of just the main game. But yeah. Every world has a little Cranky's cabin area, which you can just, where well, you can just go to and just talk to Cranky for a little bit, and, well, he's not exactly the most pleasant sometimes, as you can t as you can tell by the name. <laughs> oh man.
All right then. Yeah, he, do he does give you tips though. Um, I'm not gonna be. I'm just gonna say this now, so people don't ask me later. I'm not gonna be going for a hundred percent. I'll go for secrets as I find them. But since this game doesn't really change much if you go for all the secrets, then like there's no secret boss or ending, I believe. So I'm just gonna. It's just gonna be a straight run to the finish. Uh, when we get to two and three, I'm go obvious. I'm gonna be definitely going for the secrets and all that there because you know we're actually gonna get uh, what is it we're actually gonna get a, a an extra boss extra ending or um, true ending I guess you could say and stuff like that not to say I'm not gonna I'm gonna actively miss bonuses like if I find one around I'm obviously gonna go for it for it because the more lives we can get the better I'm just not gonna go out of my way to find them like just go around every nook and cranny or something because some of these things are actually really well hidden like some of them you have to be a certain kong for a barrel to be active and i don't know how the hell you're supposed to know about that because it's so freaking random and it's like some in just some random location so i don't really know how you're supposed to know about that stuff so i'm just not gonna bother worrying about it but like, if we find one call but I'm not gonna force myself to like look around every corner and change like every two seconds. That's just gonna get annoying. So, and I just messed up. Let me check. Let me check. Get that again. Nah. But um, yeah. Those 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 little tokens. I'll explain when when we actually manage to get one. Or did we, did we get one in the first level? Yeah. Well. Either way. And now... Music, musical bliss. Like, that that's just one thing, just to say right, na right now, like... It goes without saying, but David Wise is just a musical genius. Like, among, like, jungle hijinks, um... What was it? Um... I've already forgot what this place is called. Or oh, this song. Um, ambient something? I don't know. I, I forget the song. I feel like a dunce. But yeah, this song and so many others are like just really soothing to listen to. It's like, like I said in the Crash playthrough, like the Crash... Alright, that was my fault. Um, in the Crash... Uh, Crash 1 specifically, like, it was definitely trying to go for atmospheric, um, atmospheric atmosphere with its music, uh, as, as opposed to an really over-the-top action-y type of soundtrack, um, and that go, kind of goes to the, the same with Donkey Kong, but I feel like Donkey Kong Country does it much better than Crash 1 does, like, even though it's, it's not like over the top upbeat most of the time but what it tries to do it does it really well and it's just really great music to listen to just just kind of just to kind of relax and all that like it just it's just nice and here we have our first uh, uh oh our second animal buddy I uh, we i kind of uh neglected to mention the first one which was rambi but yeah, this is uh, Unguard, which is, as you can see, a swordfish, and these guys do help out a lot. They're kind of like your the closest to power-ups you're going to get in the game. Um, you aren't going to get any fire Donkey Kongs or anything like that, so once you get, once you see one of these guys, it's going to feel so rewarding to see them and just be able to ride them, because you feel so much more powerful when you're riding them, and when you do lose them, it feels like you've lost, you actually lost something really precious in a sense. If that, even though that's kind of weird, of a weird thing to say, but it really does feel that way because um, the thing with this game is that it's kind of designed to make you feel that way in a sense because you're just uh, you're not you're you're not even like a really uh, a Kong that has like superpowers or anything like that. You're strong. But you're not like Mario who like gets fire flowers and like 
shoots fireballs out of your hands or anything like that. You're pretty much just a standard platformer, a uh, platforming character that just can jump on enemies, roll for enemies and stuff like that. It's like, when you get a animal buddy, you just feel... You feel like you just got a friend, I guess, and then once you lose them, you just... You just kind of feel lonely. It's kind of weird to explain if you haven't played the series, but it just like when you when you uh, have like Rambi or On Guard or um, any of the others uh, along with you, or like when you lose them more specifically, it feel it just doesn't feel good. And yeah, it's one thing I will say that I kind of wish that. Returns in Tropical Freeze did better in that it really didn't have a lot of. Well, it only had Rambi, and I. I don't know, man. Like, I like Rambi, but I would. I really wish they brought back the other guys because they're so much fun to use as well. So. Oh, man. And I remember some of them. I'm not. I'm, I'm going to say this as well. I'm not the best player of Donkey Kong Country. I'm going to do my best. I am I know, like, how things work and everything and all that, but I'm not, like... What is it? The greatest player to, of mankind or whatever. But... I'll try my best. Doing pretty good so far, but we're only on the first world, so... Don't want to talk too soon. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Talk too soon. That was just kind of a fail, though. Alright. But yeah, this game is is really not that long. Like, we're already near the end of the first world life. This might be the last level, and then we have a boss. And the bosses really aren't this game's strong suit. I'm going to get that out of the way now. Um, they're still fun to fight, but they really leave a lot to be desired. Like... I, I recently just finished the main uh, game in two, and that game that game uh, had a lot of interesting bosses compared to this one. Which this one is for the most part just bun jump on the head and avoid like little pellets or something, if even that. The last boss is pretty interesting though. That's the one. That's the only one that actually kind of challenges you. Come on. Yeah. It's already not looking pretty. Interesting thing though, like, uh, if you fall and you have both Kongs, both of them will still be around um, when you go back to the level, to the level, as opposed to if you lose one of the Kongs and, and then you end up dying. Which is in pretty uh, clever, actually. All right. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. Boo. Why? I'm so bad. This is why you don't trust me with Donkey Kong Country. Okay. All right. 
Alright, finally. Gosh dang. I got hit by that stupid guy. Yeah, just leave an enemy right at the end. Alright. Can we get enough bananas for a one-up? Oh, so we have... You have a... Gr uh, you can slam the ground, but... It really isn't that useful. Like, you only really want to use it for little secrets to ha that ha have bananas in them or something, but other than that, it's not really an attack you should use for enemies. But, um... Yeah, another thing that's... that can kind of make things a little bit... well, actually quite a lot harder is that you only have one hit point. Like, after you get hit once, you're dead. Well, not exact. Well, if you have two Kongs, then it technically counts as two hits. Um, and it goes with, a, with the thing I was, was talking about earlier, about how the animal buddies make you feel like you just got a friend. Uh, and that goes the same with uh, finding a DK barrel. Like, when you're alone, you really feel that loneliness. And when you find a DK barrel, you feel a lot more safe, like that someone's someone else is there and you, you don't die just instantly and I don't know it just it's the whole uh, friendship is magic <laughs> I guess uh, geez. but yeah and again with the atmospheric music you know, just got rid of it like bonus bonanza I think it's called is I want is one of the few tracks that's like really upbeat and meant to feel in it. That's and a track that's meant to feel really energetic compared to the others. But um, yeah. And is that it? Is that really the end? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think when it has an exclamation mark on it on the tie on the. Uh, was it level title? That's when you've 100%ed it. Alright. 